Why do we have a portrait of the Queen on, on our coins? Mm, great question. Uh, that tradition has stretched back many, many centuries uh, beyond uh, British monarchy, right back into the ancient world, past the uh, Roman period and, in fact, uh, almost to the advent of coinage itself. Uh, rulers have wanted to uh, disseminate their image to their subjects. Six different portraits of the Queen on our coins and currency since 1953. Mm. Would you know how they're chosen? It's normally through a process of uh, multiple uh, artists uh, and individuals uh, effectively uh, submitting their suggestions uh, through a, uh, a tender process, and then one is uh, one, one of those are uh, selected uh, with the transition uh, from one to the next, uh, it is obviously a really important element uh, uh, that one must go through an appropriate series of uh, checks and balances to make sure you get the right image because, uh, as we know, there can be a lot that can be communicated through an image uh, and on a, such a limited uh, surface space as a mm. coin, uh, you're, you, you really don't have much uh, space to expand with, uh, with words. No, not at all. I found this next bit quite uh, interesting. Actually, I read that the a portrait of each monarch faces a different way. Why, yeah. why is that? Uh, well, there's uh, various ideas, but uh, one uh, idea is that it's uh, effectively a, a, a easier to distinguish one from the next. Mm. Uh, that, that, that occurred at least from the time of uh, James II. Uh, there's only one exception, uh, that's uh, King Edward VIII, uh, who, uh, as you would know, uh, ended up abdicating, uh, and his uh, portrait was supposed to face to the right, uh, given that George V coming before him faced towards the left, but his uh, preference was to face to the left. Now, whether that was because of a rebellious streak uh, or vanity, uh, his the part in his hair was on the left side, uh, so it could have been, uh, he just thought that was his better side. <laughs> we all have uh, a better yeah, side, don't we? <laughs> yeah, that's right, but, but, but it, uh, it, it is really an easy way to distinguish one uh, monarch's coinage from, the, uh, from, from their predecessor. All right, so how soon before we start seeing King Charles III's faces, uh, face on our coins and our notes? Yeah, so uh, in, the, uh, in times gone past in the ancient world, uh, just like the modern world, it would be almost impossible to do a recall and uh, remint of, of every single coin that, uh, that someone has in a, in a jar in the attic or wherever. Um, so that's not going to be the case. Uh, what will be the case is that uh, new coinage will be uh, brought into circulation as s subsequent years uh, proceed and through damage and loss and normal patterns of circulation, those older coins will be just uh, sort of taken out of, of circulation. Uh, in terms of the timing, uh, it, it, uh, the uh, Royal Australian Mint has indicated that it's probably sometime next year in 2023 that that process for us uh, in Australia will occur. Of course, the other thing is that uh, the, the Queen occurs on many different currencies, uh, I think around about uh, 33 currencies, uh, which is the most number of currencies that the Queen uh, that any British monarch has, has, has occurred upon uh, in the history of, uh, of, the, of the empire. So does this mean that as the, um, the currency of uh, King Charles III starts to circulate more um, within our banking system, our financial systems, I suppose that the ones with Queen Elizabeth will, be, will become more valuable? Uh, good question. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's a case that overnight your 20 cent coin is going to turn into a $20 note uh, in value or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, I mean, th th there, there were since 1966, which is when the decimal system came in on Valentine's, Valentine's Day 1966, around about 15 billion coins with the image uh, of Queen Elizabeth have been minted. So uh, right now it's not quite a rarity in uh, in the numismatic uh, uh, field of, uh, of uh, in terms of that material 
but it's certainly something uh, that is a snapshot of, uh, of of rule at a particular time and gives us insights mm. into the ideology uh, and and otherwise of that particular ruler, especially as you mentioned before, the way in which the portrait evolves from 53 all the way up to uh, 2019. You go from a, a youthful looking, um, obviously, uh, a young woman uh, with a simple wreath uh, to a tiara to then uh, later on you, you, in, the, in the most uh, recent version of the image, uh, a, a royal diamond diadem crown, which was right. used in 53. So you've got this nice kind of yeah. bookend uh, of the coronation crown uh, on the, the most recent and the mm. oldest uh, depiction of the Queen. Michael, just very quickly, we're just running out of time. What happens if Australia becomes a republic? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think King Charles is going to be on the coins. Uh, that, that then opens up a whole realm of possibilities for, mm. for what symbols uh, and uh, an ideology the, the country wants to mm. uh, sum up in its coinage. Uh, I noted mm. with interest over the last few years that the uh, Royal Australian Mint had this great Aussie coin hunt for kids where they you know collect all the different coins with everything from A to Z and uh, an aspect of Australian culture was uh, w was seen on those coins everything from a um, I think the A was Australia Post and the Z mm. was a Zooper Duper uh, <laughs> and everything in between including an Esky and everything else so how can you possibly sum up uh, the diversity of Australian culture on, uh, you know, on, on, on 15 millimetres of, yeah. of space on a, on a coin. It's, it's very difficult, yeah. but uh, it, whatever the case may be, it will be an exciting uh, new chapter in Australia's history.